uh, we've been fascinated recently to look at what's called the, the RDW, the, the red cell distribution width. Um, and we're just preparing a paper on this now. This, the, the red cell distribution width is just a metric that comes out whenever you do a complete blood count, a CBC, on a patient. They get their hemoglobin, the hematocrit, the mean cell volume of the red cells, and they get this thing called RDW, red cell distribution width, which is really just how, how varied are the red cell sizes in your blood. Ideally, red blood cell sizes should be all the same size. So the coefficient of variation would be very thin, very narrow. So if you divide the standard deviation by the mean, you get a coefficient of variation. That's the red cell distribution width. So it's expressed as a percent. If you have a high percent distribution, you've got, it's, it's a remarkable predictor of all kinds of ad, adverse outcomes independent of everything else. I mean, this is, last 10 years, this has been discovered that for some reason, this, this how your red blood cells, the, the, the variation in size of your red cells is a big predictor of outcomes, bad outcomes. And if you have a, a, a a lot of little cells and a lot of big cells, and so a, a, a wide bell curve of red cells, that is bad. You want to have a very steep, sharp distribution of red cells. And the omega, so we were interested in, since we measure the omega-3 in red cells, you know, maybe instead of just being a passive vehicle that's carrying omega-3s around the, the blood, allowing me to measure omega-3 status, maybe they're actually affecting red cell biology. Maybe they're really changing the way red cells carry oxygen, pick up CO2, squeeze through capillaries. Because, you know, red cells got to squeeze through half its diameter as it goes through a capillary. So it's got to be very flexible. And omega-3s will help make that membrane more flexible. Right. So it could be that we're actually delivering more oxygen to tissues when you have a high omega-3. Haven't tested this. This is all. I mean, I'd love to test this. Um, so it, it is really very cool that, and again, we've seen that we've got a, a data set, 40 some thousand people. We see the a very strong correlation between high omega-3 and lower, healthier RDW. And we're getting ready to submit that now. But the, the, the ways that omega-3s may be protective, we may have never thought of yet still, which is, makes it hard to explain to people how they work. Absolutely. We, um, it's easy to say they lower triglycerides. It okay, is. I get that. But it is. So what? It's probably, exactly, there's so, so many mechanisms, they're doing so many things. And, yeah. Um, that membrane fluidity yeah. with the red blood cell membranes itself, that's super um, interesting. Another thing, um, I'm sure you're familiar with Dr. Ronald Krauss's work on small dense mm -hmm. LDL particles and how those are more sure. atherogenic and, yeah. um, you know, the larger buoyant LDL seems to be more cardioprotective because it is transporting you know, fatty acids and cholesterol and things to cells. And mm -hmm. um, it's the small, dense ones that really kind of get stuck in the arteries and ha start this inflammatory cascade. Well, he's also shown, um, him and collaborator, his collaborators and colleagues, that, you know, inflammation can, you know, can basically, you know, cause a larger buoyant LDL to form a small, dense LDL. Oh, no, really? I the inflammation plays a role in that process. And so... Interesting. What I would love to see, or I guess this answers my question, you haven't looked at this yet, but the omega-3 index and small dense LDL particle. Um, we can look at that. Yeah, because... I'll get I, back to you on that. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I think that would be, you know, because it, right now people go, when they go and get their cholesterol measured, it's usually just total LDL. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, You know, there's some good LDL there. Like, you don't want well, is, no is LDL. Well, is it good LDL or is it not as bad LDL? Well... The way the reason I say good I is because you you know like when you have a damaged cell you want to repair that damage and your LDL is going to bring triglycerides and cholesterol and you know fatty acids and everything in the cell to build another membrane every time you make a new cell I mean like so it, it's serving a, a function mm -hmm, right mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. and yeah. so I guess I don't know if good is the right word Less to describe bad. it but <laughs> yeah I mean it's it's yeah. it's got a function yeah that's right. important. Um, for, for normal health. Fair enough. So, um, so I, that would be very interesting to see the, okay. if there's a correlation between omega-3 index and small dense LDL sure. particle size. We'll I, I would imagine you were going to see an inverse correlation. Mm -hmm. I um, think so. I would but, guess too, but and, we'll, we'll see. And it would be great to have that sort of panel in, in the physician's you know, toolbox, right? Where oh, they yeah. measure the omega-3 index. 
they're measuring the, this mole dense LDL. And you know, it's like, oh, your omega-3 index is 3%. Well, you got to take some yeah. fish oil or... <clears throat> right, and raising your omega-3 index is going to have implications all over the body that may not be even measurable in a blood test that are good, good things. Right. Like this red cell biology. It just behaves better. It's a more efficient mover of gases or something like that. 